Well, here we are again. It's the July. I can't believe it's July in 2023. Did we miss Christmas, Peter? I mean. Oh my gosh, you know what that means? What? Christmas in July. Oh. Yeah, you know, we didn't talk about that this morning at staff meeting. We might have to do, because we're filming I, this in June, technically, but it'll show I, in July. And I didn't get to get Nancy excited before she left today, because oh, yeah. I was, um, four days ago, I said, hey, Nancy, guess what happens in three days? I know. And she goes, what? I go, you gotta play Christmas music, because it's going to be Christmas in July. So, Nancy, who was our resident Christmas fiend... I mean, she would play Christmas music all year round, and in the back offices, she does play. We do have, you know, music playing different than what's out front sometimes, and Nancy usually picks, and she would pick Christmas music every single day, and we're like, no, we need something else. Dawn picks um, 70s. Like, it was, we were rocking to Dawn's music the other day. She had a real good choice. I love Dawn's playlist. Yeah, it's my good. favorite. But but so Nancy, because she would look, she really tries to sneak it in on us, so we give her in July, she gets to play Christmas music in July, and then she can't play it again until after Thanksgiving. And so, but I hear last week when Lenine and I were up in Chicago at an event, she was playing Christmas music while we were gone. But I wasn't here, so, I, you know, I can't, can't uh, get her in trouble. But anyway, such is the goings on in the store. Um, this is bag number six. Seven. I guess it would be bag seven. It feels like it should be six, but it's really seven because July is the seventh month. Yeah. And so we're ready to make this really cool sand hill sling. Uh, this pattern I have made in duplicate. You're going to see triplicate, quadruplicate copies. I'm giving a couple of them away. Um, this is by Noodlehead. Love the pattern. Love her instructions. She's got great video help. Talk to her. Um, you're going to love that. We just finished the Barbados bag, and I would be remiss if I didn't show you an incarnation. I'm really excited about this. This is in canvas, and I, I love That's the pretty. colors. Didn't it turn out pretty? Um, so I'm very excited that this bag turned out the way it did. I love that rose gold. It's really a nice, nice... Uh, so it's got the inner pocket and then the slip yeah. pockets and then the zip pocket. Right. So if you nice. missed last month, oh, and because this Pretty. one's for me personally, I put inside an extra little loop de loop to hang my keys off of. So I just put that in the body of the lining. You know, it's just you make an extra one of these tabs, put another D ring on it, and plug that in there. Um, and then that gives me a place to put my keys inside my purse. So um, again, I'm waiting on hardware, but it'll get here. So. That's finished. If you watched last month's video and didn't get to see that, we're like, oh, I kind of want to see when it's done. That's what she looks like done. So kudos to you if you did the Barbados bag. If you did the Barbados bag with us, go to the Always and Stitches Insiders page. Plug that in because I want you to see that. But we're not making that bag today. We're making Sand Hill, which is what I just showed you, because that's this month. Barbados was last month. So Sand Hill bag. Let's talk about it. I've got several incarnations of that. The pattern calls for canvas. And they're thinking like duck cloth canvas. Um, <clears throat> this is some spam fabric <laughs> that we had. And I've taken this. This bag's been around. It, it uh, went on a cruise with me. It went to Florida with me a couple times. Um, what I love about this bag is it's a great. I made the straps extra long. And I can wear this as a backpack. So it's like the straps will split and make a backpack if I want. Um, I put this part in the middle instead of to one side so that it really is specifically can be used as a backpack. Or you can just throw it over your shoulder. Um, it has a pocket here on the outside. Hold on. Too far. So we have a pocket on the outside. It calls for a snap button, but at the time I made this one I didn't have a snap button, so I used a <laughs> magnetic clasp, which works perfectly good. Um, it also has a zip pocket. So nice little exterior zip pocket. The bag is shown using this pocket or the zip pocket. I combine the two to make one bag, which, you know, again, I'm always telling you it's a launching point. And then inside, oh, so these are my accessories. Remember we made this before? This is a little zip bag we've made with the handle. You guys remember when we made that in a previous month? And then this is a wallet which if you've not made one of these diva wallets these are super fun and easy to make but anytime i make a bag i usually make a wallet to go with it this has a hint of what might be coming just so you pay attention and then inside there's it's just kind of open and there's a 
pocket here that has a little bit of elastic in it to just kind of hold it against the bag. I'm not real keen on the elastic because it pulls the lining kind of in a funny way and I don't see that the elastic really made any difference. But So that's one incarnation of this bag. Okay, this is another incarnation of this bag. This one is made with vinyl too, or with uh, canvas as well. This one has canvas with a, with uh, uh, Peltex in it, not the real heavy, but it's a, this one's a firmer bag because it has more um, interfacing in it. I used a heavier interfacing. Um, so same bag made with canvas, and I also used, as you can see, um, Twill tape. I guess twill tape? What do you call this? Webbing. Webbing. Okay, sorry, webbing. Twill tape would be much smaller. But anyway, webbing. So I used webbing for the strap, um, which I really like. And again, here's the pocket, but I didn't put the elastic in it. And I don't think that not having the elastic was really that big of a deal. You know, it's it's what toots your whistle. It's your bag. Again, I layered it. <clears throat> I've got the, the zipper pocket as well as the... <clears throat> exterior pocket. This time I put the snap. This is a mag this is also a magnetic snap. So that goes in. So the closure here is kind of whatever you want to do. I could see some people not even closing it. Just leaving it as you just drop it closed. You know, just lay it lay over. Um, so that's another incarnation. And then this is the one that I have to watch that Peter doesn't take. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing leather work right now. This is a this is vinyl. Um, but the reason why this bag worked really, really well in vinyl was I didn't have to sew a gusset. And we're going to show how this comes together. But the way this side comes on, there's no gusset and there's not as many layers. So if you like to work with vinyl, you're going to love this bag because it's going to go through your sewing machine really well. This time, I have the zip pocket. And I didn't put that exterior pocket on there. It's just, just the zip pocket and that's it. Um, and then interior, same thing. There's the pocket. Again, I didn't put that elastic on there. I'm not, I'm not keen on the elastic. I just don't think it makes that much of a difference. But for some of you, it might. You could even divide that pocket if you wanted to. I didn't divide it. I just left it one big open pocket. What's that elastic? Is it double fold elastic? No, actually it's a casing. You make a casing and put the elastic in it. What's, what have I seen that's called double fold elastic? Double fold goes on the top edge where you just fold it over and stretch it and then sew it on. Um, this one isn't designed that way, but we could do that another time. So again, then this is just the, the, uh, the leather. This is kind of basically looks like all leather. Um, I didn't have enough pieces, so I s sewed it together. I just want you to see that you can do that if oh, you don't have nice. enough of a piece. I like how you did the top stitch. Yeah, so it's got a little top stitch on it. It just kind of finishes it off. And I've done double top stitching everywhere on this bag. I think that's really important when you do leather, especially because if you buy a leather bag, typically you're going to see it double top stitch, not just single. So every place here where top stitching was allowed, I did two lines of top stitching. Just and you were saying that this, this material, this fabric was like a roll like a thin like it's thin it's thinner like uh weight wise it's it's very thin it's, yeah it's it's not a heavy vinyl by any means i mean it is it is a thin almost stretchy kind of vinyl so that in itself gives it a different a whole different feel and dimension it really does if you could because i know the vinyl the vinyl the vinyl the vinyl the vinyl is much much heavier and this much is denser. not heavier it's nice and no, comfortable no but it, this canvas has no lining it's very squishy this is a, a soft vinyl it's very squishy this is a canvas bag <laughs> But it's, it's firmer than either one of these two bags because I put the, the, uh, the interfacing in it that makes it heavy. So consider how dense you want it. How firm do you want it to stand up? Um, by the time I stuff it full of stuff, they stay pretty solid for me. But So here's three incarnations of this bag um, that you can see. It's really versatile. I mean, I can see this going for a... You know, a mature person. This is for you know those fun, kitschy people. And this one, my husband was kind of saying, I think I need a bag like that because of the way that it carries. Um, when you put it to one side, you can carry it as a crossbody, like this. So it's a nice crossbody. What I like about it is it's right here in front of me. I can just zip open, grab what I want, you know, be done with it. But like I said, with this one, when I made it, I put rather than the little the piece that catches the strap in the middle because this one 
I wear as a backpack like that. So that works for me as a backpack then. So, you know, why don't we keep saying this is a launching pad. This is just start from an idea. So the next one we're going to make, and I'm going to show you over here, I have some Tula fabric. Now, this is a cotton weight quilting fabric. So it's it's thin. It doesn't have the density of the vinyl or the canvas that I used on those other three bags that I showed you. So for my interfacing, for my line, not my lining, but for the stability of this, I'm using this foam. If you've not seen this before, this is foam. And it's made by, this is made by the Bosal Company. There's another one made by Annie, Soft and Stable. Um, I, this is my personal preference. I like this one better um, because this is fusible, which really makes me happy because <laughs> it, it fuses to the to each other um, but this is this is a great product it comes in a piece that's 36 by 58 I usually have a bag of this always sitting around in my sewing studio and this just has a density to it that if you've been working with vinyl or cork it basically turns whatever you iron onto it to have the same density and the same durability and the same thickness so or the same stability too so there we go so that's what I'm going to use for my interfacing. The other thing that I'm going to do with this is I'm using a fab fabric that has a very large print to it. So I'm going to fussy cut because I want that dragonfly to be right in the middle of the front pocket. So when selecting my fabric, I was very specific about how am I going to make this lay on the bag. The other ones were very random, I didn't really care. But with this, I'm going to try and make sure that piece ends up on my front pocket. So it takes a little more fabric to do, but it's, it's going to give it a better finish. So I'm going to lay this over here and I'm going to show you how I do that. So I, when I find the dimensions of what I have to make, I have this square ruler, which I, I recall is the right size. I grab this on the way home. <clears throat> and so for my exterior pocket, which is view B, view B, front pocket. I have the dimensions of that pocket and I'm going to center this right on there. So when I cut it, this, this is the center of the dragonfly. I'm going to make sure the center of the pocket lands right there. So that's how when I square up, I know my dimensions of how big that pocket's going to be. And I cut that to size. So I just wanted you to see that as an option for when you're making your bags. So I haven't cut anything up yet. I'm going to cut it up, and then Peter's going to start filming again so you can see how we make this bag. But for right now, just think about how I'm going to center that and how you could center it if you got a bump, if you got a ruler. Okay. Okay, so we took a little break, and I had to put my hair up and take some clothes off because it's hot. <laughs> so... so this is the same video, it's just things change. It's, it's a little, I'm glowing. Is that what Same it? day, too, actually. Same day. Yeah. It's Indiana, and it's so muggy out. We had it's a big humid. delivery. We had, yeah, big and humid. We had a big delivery, and they had the back doors open for the delivery, which is great. But it made this old gal warm. So anyway, that's, that's you are on the right station. Uh, okay, so I've cut everything out. <clears throat> it's taken me, what, an hour, maybe? Probably? Yeah. So that's not too bad to cut. I, I didn't quite have this as ready as I wanted. At least I had everything selected. But I did use the Bosol foam, and I also used Pellon. It's an 808 Craft Fuse weight. And I'm going to talk to you about where I used it and why I used different textured weights for different things. So when you cut this out, um, she has a sheet, and I love this. I love when the pattern designers do this. Every pattern designer who watches this video, please do this when you make a bag. It is the best idea. It's a sheet of paper and it gives you every single piece that you cut with the dimensions and then you can pin it to your piece so you know what it is. Because when you get 14 pieces cut in different shapes and sizes and one's one and a half inches and one's one and a quarter inches and they're both the same size, it's length, you know, like when they're both 15 inches long or whatever your measurement is, it's frustrating because you lose track. So. Labels, labels, labels. If they don't give you labels, make your own. You can do that. You're capable, I'm sure, of making a little label. Do it on post-it notes. You've seen me do that before. 
but she does it for you. So I don't cut up my original. <laughs> and ask me how I know. Uh, you don't want to cut up your original with your pattern. Make a copy of it. You bought the pattern. <laughs> but it's a real pain <laughs> to put those all line them back up on a sheet of paper. <laughs> it's, it's not quite that funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, don't <laughs> I know what can I say I've I've made every mistake you can make and I still make them and you know you have freedom to make the same mistakes but keep your original make a copy the other thing is in this pattern there is a a, a pattern piece it's called this the shoulder connector part same thing I make a copy of it I don't keep my original I keep my original I make a copy that I work off of because I've made this bag so many times I have this, I didn't bring it with me, but I have it in a little template that I've made out of cardboard just because I make it again and again. Um, but anyway, so yeah, don't, don't cut up your original, hold on to it. Um, so I've cut all my pieces. For the main panel, um, I did use the heavier bow saw because um, I need the support on that exterior part of the bag. Same goes for the gussets. There's some gussets, I use the heavier um, peltet, or uh, bow saw. The interior pocket doesn't call for any lining um, and then the bottom gusset I also used the heavier bow saw so um, for that rather than what they call a fuse and wovable interfacing I used the bow saw. Um, on the zip cover I didn't use the bow saw I instead used that fusible woven that 808 craft fuse it's I don't want that zip cover had I used the bow saw it would have been too thick and it wouldn't have folded nicely so that's why that's used a little thinner um, the pocket top I used the fusible bow saw on that and on the zipper pocket I again used the 808 Pel, um, Pel on because I didn't need it quite as thick now for my um, enough I mean I could have used it on the pocket bottom but it would make that bag really firm which if that's what you want that's cool but I don't want that pocket and the extra layers this would be too much um, for my handle the 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 bag strap or handle whatever you want to call it I I have this cotton webbing that I want to use but it's not big enough so I've cut from the fabric and I'm going to fold that under and lay this on top of that to get the width that I need. It's going to be a nice decorative finish. I think you're going to love how that looks when it's done. So I did use some of the 808 um, the interfacing for that as well to get some stability. So that's all my pieces. I have to fuse these. Now we're going to go to the ironing board and I want to show you a trick on how to fuse these because it gets a little messy. Um, when you use the By Annie's Soft and Stable Hopefully I got enough light here. Can we see, Peter? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So when you use the Biani Soft and Stable, it is not fusible. This has an adhesive to it, and it's on both sides. And I really, 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 really like that about it because when I make my bag, when I sew it together, once it's all sewn together, I can take this and use my iron on it, and it fuses the the interior to the exterior and everybody's all connected. So I really like to use the double-sided fusible. But when I'm ironing it at this stage, if I iron that right on my iron, the back's fusible. So we have these sheets, they're Teflon sheets, and I should have picked one up, but I didn't pick one new in the bag. But this, this is wonderful. I have these at home in all different sizes and I use them all the time. And what happens is, this will not stick to that. So I can lay my fabric down here, and even like this might stick out a little bit on the edges. So just to make sure I don't run my iron, I do this. And I iron through that Teflon. And that makes my fusibles now not fusing to things I don't want them to and still fusing to things I do want them to. So um, don't, don't, don't make the mistake I did. Now, I think you can use freezer paper for this too. No wrong parchment paper I've used parts that's it I've used parchment paper but it can get a little messy too so just buy some of this Teflon stuff you'll use it it's a great product and see so I still it's stuck here but it didn't stick to that but the sticky is still there oh, so now this will nice. still fuse okay so all my fusible pieces that are double fused like this that are fused on both sides I'm going to put in between this Teflon and it keeps my iron clean 
I got a new iron, Peter. You did? Did you get the tiger print iron? The leopard print. The leopard so, print iron, did you? Yes, when we were <gasps> up in Chicago oh. this weekend at the Oloso. You're the culprit. I am the culprit. We, They had a brand new, just like this Oloso, which I love my Oloso irons. Um, but the bottom of it's beigey brown and the bottom has leopard print. Now, I do not need another iron, but <laughs> I love leopard print almost as much as I love butterflies and, and uh, flamingos. But I had to have it, so I bought it because, you know, when else are you going to get it? The other thing I want you to notice is I've really paid attention to how the, the pattern on this particular fabric is going to oh, I see what you did. fussy cut. See? So I, I've made sure when I fussy cut that it's kind of centered and fun. It's like if I had cut that off center, it wouldn't be as attractive to the eye. So I was really very careful. Everything I cut, I made attention, paid attention to the pattern that it was right side up versus wrong side and so on like that. When you use a solid color, not an issue. But for this particular fabric that I chose, it has a direction and it has a specific pattern. Um, the other thing I did, um, pocket bottom, zipper pocket top. Okay, so when you look at this, let's see if I can make this work, and hopefully I did it like, like I said. So when I cut this piece, let me take these little pieces off of here. So one is a zipper pocket bottom and one is a zipper pocket top. So these two pieces are going to go together and a zipper is going to be between them. So I cut it in one piece and then I cut the two pieces that I needed so that when I put my zipper in, my picture continues from here to here. So that it just interrupts the picture rather than this one going this way and then this would have something wonky doodle that doesn't go right. So. Again, when I'm looking at the pattern of what's going to be on my bag, I want to make sure everything lays nicely and looks pretty. So, I have to do some fusing. I don't know that Peter's going to want to film all that, but I'm going to fuse everything that needs to be fused together, and then we're going to go to the sewing machine. So, stay tuned. All right, so I've spent my time at the iron ironing board fusing all my pieces. So everybody's fused that needs to be fused and it's really it is easiest to do it this order cut everything fuse everything and then I can just sit down at the sewing machine and sew. Sometimes my enthusiasm gets ahead of myself and so I'll do a little part and go back and forth whatever works for you but I like to do it in order it kind of for the bags it makes it simpler. Um, so the first thing I have to do according to the pattern is make the strap holder and the strap holder could be made out of fabric but I'm actually making it out of the webbing. Um, so that just makes it a super simple, easy way to do it, and I don't have to sew anything. So I've already made my strap that way. The other strap that I told you I was going to make, I made my fabric background that I'm going to fold. Let me show you how we're going to make this. So because I need an inch and a half width and my webbing is only one inch, I'm going to just fold this in to meet in the middle and then I'm going to lay my webbing on top of that seam. So I really don't even have to do anything other than just iron this together just like this. So I did put interfacing in it, um, but I put that 50, no, 808. Um, and you can see I had to piece it a little bit, and that's okay. It's, it's all going to be inside. This is one of those places where I could probably use one of those sashers if I wanted to. But I don't have them because I'm at the shop and I didn't bring mine with me. But I'm just folding this in half all the way and doing a quick press. So this is a chance to talk about, you know, how you doing, what's up. We were just talking about our pets and how silly our pets are about not talking to certain people when they should talk to everybody. So I could have drawn a line down the center, but I'm just eyeballing this because I know I cut my fabric at three inches. So when I fold both pieces in, that gives me an inch and a half, which when I lay my one inch piece on top, that's going to give me a quarter inch exposure on either side. So it's, it's going to really look cool. I think you'll like this. I've done this on other straps, and it really dresses the strap up and gives you that, you know, a little bit more professional fun. Nobody says a strap has to be just the way the pattern says, right? Exactly. We want to make it our own. That's that boutique thing. Okay. And so now I'm going to lay my piece of strapping, which is here, right here. And you know what's going to hold that strapping in place when I sew it? 
And what I'm going to use? Um, strap tape. Strap tape. Yeah, that's it. I'll use strap tape, aka zipper, zipper tape. tape. Now we have the new. I just got the new zipper tape. The really thin zipper tape um, has come in. Oh, well, you know, I think I threw out my bag and now I can't find it. So I would use zipper yeah. tape there. I don't have it. I don't have it with me. This is hard not so in my own studio. But I'm making it work. <laughs> So, but I'm basically going to lay that right in the center. So, since I don't have zipper tape with me right this very second, I'm going to just pin them in place. And I'm just basically revealing a quarter of an inch on each side. So, I'm just going to binder clip that in place. Good old binder clips. Now, here's the other thing. I don't know if you know these binder clips have marks on them. Quarter inch, um, five eighths, and a half. Did you know that, that those binder clips have labels on them? Mm -mm. I know. A lot of people didn't realize that. So technically, if I put that in there and put that right there, that should be a quarter inch from there to there, right? Oh, uh, look at that. The math. Oh. It's math. I have a cousin. She's really super smart. And um, she's a math person. She does, like, really complicated math. <laughs> I'm like, give me simple stuff. But she's a really good mathematician. So I'm going to just pin these in place, use my binder clips to measure that distance. See, look at that. It's, it's going to mark that quarter inch, and I don't have to do anything other than just check with my binder clip. Looking at the lines on my binder clip from there to there makes it a quarter of an inch. Don't you love it when they come up with these great inventions? And we don't have to think. Yeah, I didn't. I for a long time didn't realize those little lines were in there, but that's what they're for. And then I'm just going to top stitch down this, just like I would normally with a with a strap. But this is what made it wider because the swivel, you'll see the swivel that this goes on, is a heavier swivel. So when you see this go through here. See, I need that extra fullness. Now, I'm going to put it through this way so that it shows. But see, I need that extra width. The other way, it would have been too small. I could put a smaller swivel on it. I could always just put a one-inch swivel. But the weight and the way this is made, I think it really needs this durability. The other thing is, the top of where it goes in is designed for an inch and a half. And so. Well, and I, I think it's cool you're doing this because not all... Not always when we have a project and we're excited to start it, do we have all the other stuff to go with it. Right. And and sometimes it's a pain in the butt to hunt down and find that exact thing to the half an inch. Like if something needs a half an inch buckle, but all the buckles are five eighths inch, you know, what do you do? So great way to solve a problem. Right. I think it, it, you, you, oops, there goes a clip. Um, you're right. You're exactly right. And I know even in our inventory, sometimes like I've got three bags sitting over here right now. The shipment just came in the back door. Thank you, Dawn. I'm dropping clips and she's picking them up. Um, the shipment just came in the back door. I'm waiting on hardware for some bags. I could have modified. I didn't really want to. So now that I put the binder clips on that side, and I know this is one inch, that's a quarter, that's a quarter. This side's a quarter too. So I'm going to sew down this side, and I don't have to take my binder clips off. It holds it in place. So I don't have to binder clip both sides. Remember, I'm the lazy sewer. Okay, that's what I want to be. I want to be known as the lazy sewer. The, the lazy stitcher. Instead of lazy stitcher. Well, instead, no, but see, sewer spelled like sewer. And so that's sewer. like I call people suus, so it's I'm a la lazy sewer. Okay, so I'm going to set my stitch length at 3.2, which is pretty good. I've got a 40 weight, uh, it's a pretty bigger, it's a bigger stitch. I have a 40 weight thread, I have 40 weight in the bobbin, I have a 16 needle end, so it's a heavy needle because I'm going through several that, layers. And it's purple. I gotta get a picture of the purple. I know, this purple is for Peter, he likes the purple. Love that. I think I changed the needle. Yeah. I think I'm pretty sure that's a big We're going to find out. We're going to find out real quick. If it don't look right, we'll know. So that just holds it in place. And see, I'm, you know, as I'm putting it down, I'm kind of making sure, yeah, that's about a quarter of an inch. And I'm just sewing in about an eighth of an inch. You know what I didn't bring with my stylus? I'm sewing in about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the webbing to here. And that's going to secure my entire strap. And I'm not going to have to just do anything at all. To make that strap wider and it's a fun decorative i think that purple really pops against that i think it's a neat decorative element me too 
So, you know, think about those little pieces of cork you've got left. Like if you've got some cork yeah, that you would want to put on top cork. of some fabric. That would look good. But my seam is hidden now. I didn't have to do anything but to just hide that seam. Isn't that fun? And it's and shifted a little bit as I've gone, which is fine. Make sure my space looks good. I don't know, I might like this better than the zipper tape heater. I think this may be a better solution because I'm having to shift it a little bit. Webbing has a tendency Yeah, that zipper tape probably wouldn't have been a good idea. It wouldn't idea. have been as good a choice. Because there's something about the way it's going through the machine. Yeah, it's shifting a little. And it could be that the fabric is either, um, when I pressed it, it kind of stretched it. I don't know. Who knows? But this Yeah, who knows? We could try and figure it out all day, and I don't need to know. Uh, I, I can stand here and try and figure out what I'm recording, but I don't <laughs> think I'm going to figure this one out. No, it's okay. But this is working really well. Oh, I think I figured it out. What's that? It's the slickness of the cotton quilting fabric, and that cotton twill is more grabby. Could be. So when the pressure is applied on this, it's sliding across that quilt cotton, because this is much more grabby. Well, well hopefully it's not going to make texture. my... my um, fabric it's not going to make it like do weird things no i don't think it will i don't think so but boy i'm sure liking that finish that purple against that too is a really good mm -hmm. color you know anytime you get purple and green next to each other they're happy they really just vibe well they do that's a color wheel lesson they right get there. along they that's get along a color wheel they're our sewing machine department's been a busy place today yeah it is so everybody, by the time they see this, will have finished their holiday for the 4th of July. Look, you don't even see that stitching. Yeah, it sinks right in. But look at that on the other side. Very cool. All right. Let's go back and do the other side now. And now I'll take my clips out. And I've learned I set my little clip holder right there. And then that way, as I go, I just pop them off. No foot pedal for me. fun handle. Uh -huh. I like that strap. And it's going to have enough density that when it goes through the belt loop, the belt buckle where it makes it a slider, it won't slip and slide. Um, I've had some issues, and, it, and it, I need to check out what Tula says uh, about her nylon that if I use it for a strap and you run it through a belt buckle to make it a slider like we're going to do with this one, it doesn't have enough grip against itself and they slip and slide and they don't stay in place, so it's not making me happy. There we go. Okay, so now in order to do a belt buckle, this is how this works, and this is confusing, so this is what makes it adjustable. So I'm gonna leave those ends like this for now. I have to put the buckle through here, through one end, okay? That's the top. And then you put this piece through here, Okay, that's a loop. This piece is going to get sewn. Oops, I'm doing it wrong. Here we go. I'm going to have to tell you. That goes through there. Then this comes back through here, and that goes through the top. So since I put it on this way, we're going to do it like this. We're going to run this through here like that. And I'm going to sew that down. Now I'm going to leave enough like that. And then I'm going to pull this through here, like this, like this. Okay, so that gets sewn down, and this goes like this. That leaves all of this on the outside. Because it's two-sided, that's what's going to be on the strap. And then no matter how I roll this, as I move that Very up or cool. down, it'll change. Very so cool. I gotta be careful how I do that. And you know what's nice about that webbing is it really grips to your clothing, so you yeah. don't have to worry about that strap sliding. Right. Off. I've had some slip sliding. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this off. I actually used just this, the uh, salvage of the fabric, so I'm just gonna cut that off. And I know it's an exposed raw edge, but you know what I'm just gonna do? I'm just gonna do a zigzag stitch right across that. This one's gonna go up inside the bag, but for this end, I'm just gonna run a zigzag stitch across there. I'm gonna do a, a kind of tight zigzag. Oh, 
Oh, come on. What's my zigzag? Where's zigzag? I know it's here. Okay. Oh, Foot. I put the straight stitch plate on. Brr. All right, let's change the plate. Here we go. This is a fun thing about this machine. Because I had what's called a straight stitch plate on it, which is this plate here. See how it's three holes all together? That means it won't make a zigzag. It also means that when I'm quilting, the pieces don't get caught down in there. But I'm going to change that and go to an open plate, which is this one. If you watch our color collage um, quilting one, you'll see me use that other foot. And now I just replace this with that. I need your window. I need my window. It stayed on the plate. So now I'm going to zigzag this end. I really am. So now I can pick the zigzag. See, she's smarter than me. Now she lets me pick it. So it, I'm going to go to a fairly wide zigzag. I'm going to go to about a 4.5 zigzag, which is a pretty wide one. But I want to cover that. And I'm going to put them closer together than probably what it calls for. Just in the way it's standard made. And I'm going to go back over it a couple times to seal that edge. Now this is on the underneath side of the bag. It is not going to show. So I'm just putting a nice little zigzag stitch across there. I'm going to trim it up a little bit. Looky there. Perfect. That's acceptable for me. Some people might go, oh no, that's not acceptable. I'm good with that. Now, the other question I get sometimes, and I'm going to pull this out just while I'm doing this part. How do you get that X mark to look good? The trick to that is drawing a line. It's not hard. So, because this is an inch and a half, I'm going to put some lines on here. And I, the other thing I have to be sure is this is out of the way. And I'll probably have to put my zipper foot on in order to make it um, be able to sew to get up next to that buckle. But I'm going to put a line, mm, we're going to have to go, yeah, we're going to have to go a little, little deeper. Because I have to have a quarter inch between the buckle and where my foot is, because I know there's just not enough room otherwise. So there we go. So I'm going to draw a line across here, and I'm going to put a line up about a quarter inch from that edge. Or actually, we're going to go pretty close to that edge. And then I connect those with an X, and then I sew on the X. If you try to eyeball that, you will never be happy with it. You will not have a nice X. And I'm going to sew all the way around and do the X too. And that really secures that buckle down. Okay? But first I've got to change my foot. The zipper foot. So this is one of those circumstances where your zipper foot really is uh, a helpful foot to use because it's smaller, has a tinier footprint. Oh, there is a zipper foot, I know. This machine doesn't have all our parts. All right, the zipper foot will use a straight stitch. There it is. See, I need anything. So this is my zipper foot. And see, with a zipper foot, I can get on either side or in the middle. So I can get real close to things. And that's why I want to use it. Because it's going to make it easier for me to get up next to that buckle. Um, and I know a lot of times with bags, that's, that's the issue. You can't get into those little spots. So zipper foot. I'll probably go ahead and do some of the zipper part, too. I like to try and do... I just don't like changing my foot all the time, but we do. Okay. So I have my lines. And see, looky there. I can get all the way underneath there and not the edge of this foot. Use my. I can't believe I didn't bring my stylus. The edge of this foot is not going to get in the way of that buckle or vice versa. And that would have been a problem before. I wonder if Grandma Ginger changed my mouse pad because now it's got a sticky 
probably. Okay, so I'm going to stay at 3.4 for my stitch length. Um, I'm going to slow it down so I'm not going quite so fast. And then I'm going to move my needle so that it's over where I want it, stitching on this side of the zipper foot. Now, when there's a, that's a pretty good bulk I'm going into there. So I'm going to have to probably start it and push it through on my own. Oh, no, she's taking it. She's such a good little machine. I am going to stitch back there just to be sure that it stays because you don't want this to come apart on your bag. This is really kind of where the stress happens. Okay, and I am right on the edge for this. I'm even off the edge. We'll go backwards. We'll go back a stitch. There we go. Okay, and then I take the X. Now, see, there's where you get into the buckle. I have to go this way. When I'm on the side of the stitch now, let's go up. I'm going to take the needle out and push that buckle out of the way. There she goes. Okay. Okay, now I go to that corner and I stop. And then I'm going to turn. And I'm just leaving the needle there, but I'm staying right on the edge. And I'm going to go back this way. And I'm going to this point. I'm locking it up. So that gives me an X that I like. It's not, it's not, you just can't eyeball that. I'm just going to tell you right out, you can't eyeball it. So see, now I've got a nice X right where I wanted it. And I locked it at the beginning and I locked it at the end. And that gives a nice finish. You don't really even see it, that pattern's so busy. But when you have something you can really see it, you don't want that X to look nasty. All right, so now I pull this through here, like that. Okay. And now I have a slider. So that's gonna hook on the bottom of the bag, that's gonna be, and then I can move this to whatever length I want it to be. I love that strap. I'm like, that's money right there. That is a beautiful strap, and that rose gold looks really nice with that fabric. All right, so there's that part. You have to make both those pieces first because it's the early part. And there's, she gives you a real good um, explanation about how to do the shoulder connector. And then this one of the things I love about the way is the way this um, connects. D ring on the floor. D ring on the floor. Okay. Oh, that's what you're looking for. No, I'm actually looking for the. But that's okay. We'll pick it up because we're going to need it. Um. The way this strap connects to the top of the bag is really cool. It has like a little bell almost that it sews into. It's the first part that I did. Here we go. So you have these two kind of triangular pieces. This is a pattern. And this piece goes down in here. Actually, we're going to put it in this way. So when, it's, when it comes out of it, it's like that. But you have to put it in like this. And I like to put it in a little ways to catch it. So that's why I left all this extra. I'll cut all that off when we get it sewn on. But this is another one of those things where I want it centered. You know, I want to be sure that I'm about a quarter of an inch on each side that it's centered exactly where it needs to go. So this is one of those things where I'm going to take my binder clip and I'm going to clip that in place. And you have to put this all together before you sew it to that end. Otherwise, you can't get that into your bag, okay? All right, so now we're going to go back to the other foot, foot change. This is where you fast forward. Pit stop. <laughs> yeah, pit stop. Nice thing is it's a pretty easy machine to change your feet out of. I do use a walking foot when working with this, um, just because it's easier. Pushes it all through. All right. So this piece I sew on these sides, but I don't sew across the bottom because it won't work if you do. So these pieces are gonna go together. And I think she tells you quarter inch seams. I do a pretty generous quarter inch just because, uh, oh, she says seam allowance throughout is a half an inch. So, all right, so that's true. That's, I'm, I've probably done the whole thing in a half an inch. That's, I was pretty much doing three eighths, but half inch is probably even better. So I'm just gonna sew around this piece. Stop at that corner. Turn. 
And my piece is just stuck in the middle there. Now, can you hear our peanut gallery? Aren't they fun? Hey, this is a cool piece. I love this. I think this is a neat trick. It looks very impressive on the bag. Yeah, I'm going to clip. I'm going to do some clipping here. I'm going to cut this off. Don't need all that up there. I'm going to cut this at an angle to kind of make that fit better. That's pretty full. If this was vinyl or leather, it's about the same thickness as if I had used vinyl or leather. I'm even going to trim this down a little bit because I don't need all that fullness. The other trick is like when I use foam like that, I can just trim this piece out. If that foam wasn't completely connected, I could have, you know, just trimmed it out. I'm going to probably, I am going to, there's no probably about it. I'm going to leave the bag part, the handle, because I really want to stitch over that again. But this part I don't really need. And then you just pop this out. Look at there. Isn't that fun? It's a bell. It's a bell. It's a little bell. And then I kind of fussy cutted these pieces to make sure, you know, that they turned out fun. So look how fun that looks, that design. That's going to be cool on the bag. That's fun. Isn't that fun? Yeah. And then I'm going to top stitch this. Now, I don't have my turner, but I'm going to use the point of those to get those out pretty far. And then I'm going to just top stitch all the way around this piece on the outside. Here we go. There. Now that foam has made this really dense, so I'm going to, this will be interesting. The, um, the vinyl that I used wasn't this heavy. Oh, this is going to look great. What I like about that foam, too, is when I sew this down, it almost looks like it's got like a like piping in it. That's got like a real nice puff to it. Uh huh. Doesn't it look? It's got yeah. a nice piping look, which makes me happy. So there's there's the strap connector. Love that. That's going to look great on this bag. All right, that part's done. All right, where does she take us next here? I think we start in pockets. Yep, zipper pockets. So we're back to the zipper. All right, so thankfully I have all my pieces labeled so I know what's what. Um, so zipper pocket bottom. This is an exterior zipper pocket. And there's a zipper cover and a zipper pocket top. And I'm using zipper on a coil. So if you've not seen this before, you can buy zipper, just a coil of zipper. Um, and I just cut off a chunk for the length that I need. And I always oversize it so that I can have some extending on either side. But this stuff is great. I love it. If you make a lot of bags, this is awesome. It's cheaper and it's easier to use. The other thing that I need is zipper heads. Y'all have seen me put in zipper heads before. This one has some fun zipper heads. These have little holes in the in the tips, so I'm going to be putting some fun things on that. You'll see that in a minute. But in order to put this zipper on, you guys have seen this before, we just cut the size of the zipper head off of the teeth on one side. There we go. And then I put this on here. And you slide that into that spot on the top. And now we go right on. So now I have a zipper with the head that I wanted. So we'll be putting zipper heads on the top of the bag too. So here I use my zipper pocket bottom, and this is an exterior. This is for view A. You have two choices. You have a view A and a view B. Um, we're doing view A on the pocket. I only used the 808. I didn't use the full vinyl for the full, uh, the heavier, the heavier interfacing, the soft and stable. So I put a zipper here. Now again, I could use my um, zipper tape, which I can't believe I didn't bring my zipper tape or my stylus. I'm just bad. 
There's, Boyer Turner. I know. I'm just I'm shocked. Okay, so here's a fun little thing. I didn't have quite enough fabric. I didn't cut it just exactly right. I just put a seam. This is a lining piece. I don't care if there's a seam on my lining. So I seamed that. Make just it work. To save a little bit of fabric. And save a trip to the fabric store. Save a trip to the fabric store. <laughs> now, I want you to come to the fabric store. <laughs> so let me show you how we do this. So I'm I'm putting right side of the fabric to the right side of the zipper. This is my lining. I'm layering these three pieces. Again, zipper tape's a great solution, but I'm going to show you how to use these binder clips. We're doing it old school today. We're doing it old school. This is pre-binder clip. or pre. Now, again, see this space out here? This is why I did that, so I don't have to worry about moving my zipper head when I sew. And I just match these edges up. Now, you could sew the zipper onto the front and then sew it to the lining, blah, 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 blah. I'm not that person. This looks like the burrito method. This this does kind of look like a burrito method. Oh, you know, I wonder if I can. I don't think I can. Nope, it's not going to let me do it. I'm going to have to change my foot. That one little part that I had to sew, I should have just left the foot alone, I guess. You do get a different, especially when I'm top stitching, I really do want to use my the right feet because the stitch won't look as pretty. It just doesn't pull it through as well. I'm taking that off. It's giving me grief. Okay. Here we go. Zipper foot. Now, we had this discussion last time, and, you know, when Peter brought it up, I hadn't even thought about it. He was a good person to say something about it. How far away you can be from your zipper foot. Th your zipper. This zipper is beige. I'm not as excited about my zipper tape on this one as I usually am about my zipper tape. What I really wanted was the red, or the red, the rose-colored gold kind of the the metal part. I love the metal part. So I'm going to sew a little closer to this um, zipper than I normally do because I don't really want as much of the beige to show. When I have a zipper color that's like fun against the pop of a bag, I may sew pretty far out because I want you to see the zipper tape. This one, nah, zipper tape isn't making me quite as excited. So I'm not going to sew as far away from the zipper tape as I normally would. Or from the zipper. I'm going to sew a little close. But I'm not going to sew so close that the zipper head won't move. And I'll test that to make sure that I haven't messed myself up. But you always have to leave enough room for that zipper to pass through there. Don't make that mistake. I've done it. <laughs> like I said, there's not a mistake you can't make that I haven't made before. We just keep making them. But they're design opportunities. So see, I'm, I'm closer to that zipper tape than I usually am. If you've seen me make bags before, but there's still enough room for the zipper to get through, but I'm not featuring the zipper tape. What I want to feature is the zipper itself. Okay, so now I've got this. That's my lining. So I sewed it like this. I open this up. That's the lining of the pocket. This is the front of the pocket. Okay. So that makes it happen. Now, there's a zipper cover on this, which is super cool. I love that this little zipper cover happens. I did not put the um, Bosol foam. I put just the regular thread, a regular interfacing in that. And you have to fold so that you have to iron this in half, which I didn't do. Peter, you want to read? <laughs> we just need to iron. Iron. This. Iron. Here. Oh. Yeah, you can't. Okay, watch your fingers. Got it. And this is this is this is how can two people iron? There you go. Just iron that right now. Perfect. I love ironed. Awesome. Okay. So I folded that in half, and she doesn't tell you, but you know I'm the top stitch person. I really like everything to be top stitched. Now I'm going to look at this piece, and I'm going to figure out how do I want it to go on there. Do I want it? I didn't fussy cut this piece, and I knew when I didn't, I didn't do it on purpose. But, I mean, which side do I want? Do I want that side up, or do I want this side up? I think I kind of like that side. I don't know. I could really fussy cut that and make that really match. I didn't take the time. I know I have my zipper foot on, but I am going to put some top stitching on this. Just a little down the edge here. Because if I don't, I'll regret it. It also stabilizes it a little bit. Okay. All right. And now I'm going to put that on top of this 
right here. This covers, this. it's a zipper cover. I mean, it's exactly what it says it is. It's a zipper cover. It's to cover the zipper. Now, I have a zipper pocket top, and I've also put the foam on that, and it's going to be what folds up and makes the top of the bag, okay? So I'm going to put that on there, too. So I have three layers going on. I have the little cover, the zipper, and the top. And I'm going to do this in one scoop, too. So I want to make sure my edges line up over here. So everybody's lined up down this way. And go here. And again, I could potentially, I could sew the pocket on first, and I think she even has you sew the little cover first, and then she has you put the top on. I'm not doing that way. I'm doing this all in one stitch. Just one time through the sewing machine. Now, my presser foot, my uh, zipper is in there again, so I'm going to be sure I get close to it. pretty close to a zipper. It doesn't mind too much. And there we go. And then that's going to go down like that. So see that covers that zipper. I think it's really a cool way to do it honestly. It really it's it really gives that bag another level of pow. We'll top stitch that, but we don't top stitch that yet. As a matter of fact, she's very clear, do not top stitch that yet. Because we have to put the main exterior panel underneath it. Okay, so I'm going to find my main exterior panel, and I know that because I have a label on it. That's my lining. Now I've cut two of these, and see, I, I fussy cut those ladybugs so they're right in the middle. Unfortunately, one of them is going to be inside the pocket, so you won't see her until you go in the pocket. But that gives me a chance to go, okay, which one do I like better? Well, that's the same. All right, so this goes then on top of this. Now, when I press this down, if you notice, my exterior pocket with the little top on it has gotten a little bit bigger. So I'm going to match it at the top. And here's the cool part about that double fusible. This will now fuse to that. Oh, look at that. So when I iron it, and I'm going to take it to the iron over here, and I'll make Peter slide over a little bit. Press this piece out. That's going to iron right into that. There we go. And I want this to go up. I want that like that. There. Mm -hmm. Here. I'm having trouble holding everything. Yep, enough hands. There we go. So my zipper is going up. See how the zipper is laying that way? And i got to be careful. You can melt the teeth on these um, zippers. If you get too close. Oh, that's not sticking for me for some reason. Oh, well. I, don't, I think I can't penetrate through all the layers as a problem. So I'm just going to binder clip. Good old binder clip. When you're at your hot. Now I'm going to sew across here. So then that gives me that piece there. Um, I'm going to top stitch here though. See there right there? That didn't get top stitched. See what I'm talking about? Yeah. So before I do that, I'm going to top stitch this down. Do that first. I'm still next to that silly zipper. But I'm going to go to the other side. So here's why. So I sewed close to that edge. Now I'm just going to rotate that needle over and sew on this side. Top stitching is that thing that really brings your bags to another level. Top stitch whenever you can at the right point. Oh, I love that deep purple purple against that. It's really fun. 
All right, so here's this piece. I'm gonna binder clip it on since it will be this binder clips. Happy, do you change your stitch length when you top stitch or not? Yes, yes. Stitch on top stitching, I go to 3.4. When I'm, but the other thing is when I'm sewing a bag, it's so thick. A lot of times you can't go a tinier stitch anyway because it won't go through all the thicknesses. So, all right, here we go. I'm on my zipper again, so now I'm going to go back over to this side. <laughs> Oh, shoot. Okay, here we go. Now that's through all the layers. There's the pocket, there's the back, or the bag front. And that closes that zipper pocket. There you go. So that's the front of the bag. That wasn't too bad. That's the front of your bag. And then when we sew this down, it's going to make that lay flat. What's happened, too, is this is a little longer. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to make sure that this is 12 inches tall. So I'm just going to square that up. So just like squaring up a quilt. So I'm squaring up a bag. A handbag panel. A handbag panel. I'm going to Make sure everybody's laying where they need to lay. I love making bags. Now, I'm going to move my zipper over. If you could only sew one thing the rest of your life, what would it be? Bags. bags. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Because you know what I like about them is it's, it's, they're, they're, well, I like making quilts too. I shouldn't say that. I get, I don't know, there's something gratifying about getting it done and having one project, you know. I don't know. They're, they're so, like, uh, okay, so right now in color collage, I've got to make 48 half square triangles. Now that's nothing. Dawn, how, what's the most half square, half square triangles you've ever had to make for one quilt? Do you know? Uh, I think it was over 2,000, 2,300 oh and some. I would slip my wrist. Oh no, I had so much fun. <laughs> you're I and I think you. they were one and a half inch, one inch finished. <laughs> okay. That would be like if your choice of going to heaven or the other place, that would be the other place uh, for me. I'm just uh, saying, I love the diversity. I'm so, I'm so glad you do, but I would never. I've got to, I've got to make 24 half square triangles and I'm whining about it. <laughs> oh dear. All right. So anyway, this has to be 12 inches tall. Well, when you get to heaven, they're gonna, to heaven, they're gonna say, "We already have a table set up for you for your handbags, Cappy." That'd be perfect. But if he, if and then I when get Don, there, when Don gets there, gonna, he, they're gonna say, "Hey, we already got a table set up for you for your one and a half inch squares." That's right. So you can just start making is. triangles. Oh God! That's bless the quilts you. I made. Well, it's gonna focus here. Take it a minute. Whoa! Oh. I'm sure it's over the top. It's, it is over the top. It's on my bed. I'll, I'll show Cappy. <gasps> show Cappy. Holy moly. Yeah. I couldn't sleep under it. It's so pretty. It's heavy oh, because of all the seams, but gosh. It's a hug you quilt. It's a hug you quilt for sure. Yep. It's a quilt that won't let you get up and get out of bed either. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Okay, we're gonna um, I'm gonna change my needle on this. I'm not excited about my stitches. I've got a feeling I have other you have a feeling? needle. I have a feeling that's a size, uh, size 11 12 that was in there. Yeah, I got a feeling this is not doing me really the best stitch. It probably was for quilting instead of a big needle. Which is now, now that one looks stout. She looks like she means it, doesn't she? Yeah, ready to take care of some business. She's shopping in the plus size, man. Okay, um, and then we're going to go back to the walking foot. Gosh, that's pretty. That rose gold on that fabric is stunning. That rose gold looks good. Yeah. And that's the fun part. I think, I, you know, and I think that's the other part about bags is I think I have more creativity, I guess. I don't know. Well, you got the hardware. You have fun picking out hardware. I do have fun picking out hardware. And then you get to make the matching wallet for everything. I know, I do. I make it. And that's, that's, that's future, future, future information. All right. So here's she said. And how fun would the matching wallet be on this? Because look I at the know. look at the size of that wing spread on that. Is that just about the right size? Yeah. Isn't it? So if you say butterfly flutterby, how do you say dragonfly? 
Oh, I hadn't thought about it. I don't, I'm not going to say that. He's dragging by. <laughs> what do you call it? Dragging by. Dragging by. I don't know. Okay, so we're going to base this down just because I don't want my zipper to come off. And I just kind of want these pieces to come together. That means stitching, you know, pretty close to the edge. I'm going to go up to 5.0 is the biggest stitch my, this machine will do. So I'm just going along. I could do a zigzag along here. Um, I do like to do a zigzag. Sometimes it helps compress the foam a little bit. I know with this pattern, compressing the foam is not an issue, but it is a nice way to get that foam to be a little snugger. If I'm using vinyl, I am not going to zigzag because it creates too many holes in my in my vinyl, and I don't want to take a chance of, of weakening it. But this foam, you can sew through it to death and it doesn't care. It does create a crease though, so this is you know a design feature that when I put the bag together, it's going to make that edge even a little poppier, you know, a little tighter. Okay, so I've just sewn around that just to secure everything, and so that's the front of my bag. Look at the dragonfly that's on the center. She's a little off center, but that's okay. In the pocket. I love it. I love it. And I love the little zipper cover. I just think that's kind of a little extra, you know, powwow. It's very cool. Very, very cool. I just love making bags. I just, I don't want to make money. I just want to make bags. Now, that was, that was view A. That was view A that we just made. There is another one that you can make that's view B with the pocket flap. I'm not doing that one today. Um, the next thing you want to do is to make the interior pocket, um, which is, I think, interior pocket. Yeah, that's just two pieces. So. That's exterior. Where, here, here they are. Here's my interior. This is why you have to have everything labeled. Interior pocket. Um, this actually calls for an elastic casing. Remember I told you that she puts an elastic casing in it? I'm not going to put the elastic casing in it. I don't care for the elastic casing. But if I was putting it, I'm going to sew here, and I'm going to sew down a half an inch, and I stretch a piece of elastic between the two, about an inch shorter than the dimension across the top, pull it, and sew down the sides, and then you have your elastic casing. I just, I kind of don't see the point, honestly. I think it's, if you want it to kind of hold a little bit, it's, it's okay. I'm actually in this bag, because I've made a dozen of them, I'm going to split this pocket so that it, it's a two-sided pocket, um, or a, you know, a double pocket. And you know, I'm going to top stitch. Yeah, my stitches are better. That, that thread, that, or that needle that was in there was not the right needle. Um, the other thing I brought to show you, this is, if you're in a pinch and you can't really iron right away, or when you're working sometimes with vinyl, this little roller thing is a dream. You can just use that to roll, and it's amazing how much of a press you get just by doing that. Like, the first time I used this, I was kind of like, what? And it really does. You don't need the heat. Look how flat that is. That's kind of wackadoo. All right, so now I'm going to put a little... Um, top stitch on it. So even though it's a pocket inside, we want a top stitch on it. Baby bar the door. The other thing is when you put that top stitch on there, it secures that seam. I've caught the, the, the other thread, or, I mean, I've caught the, where I turned it and everything, so it just, it makes it a little nicer. So that's my interior pocket, it's done. Had I been asked to put plastic, or put a, the elastic in it, I would have, but I did not. Um, so the main panel on the lining, now I'm going to sew this to the lining. So here's my lining. Um, there we go. And it just sews onto that. And this is just a matter of securing it. This, when you sew it together, um, it's going to connect everybody. So I'm just going to go down the side here with a big old stitch. Just to catch everybody. When you sew it together, you'll put this on. Actually, we'll just do that real quick. I'm just holding it together till I get there. And we'll sew all four sides together. The other thing I really like about this bag, you're going to see in a minute, is you don't have to do a folded gusset. So I think if you're working with cork or vinyl, you're going to find this is a great pattern to use. All right. 
So now that's done. Now we have to do a little curve here because the way this gusset goes on the outside, we have to cut round circles. Now it comes with a part in your bag, a pattern. In the pattern, there is a circle. Get it out of the pattern over here because I've done lost mine. And you know what I normally use? <laughs> a quarter. The edge of my the edge of my zipper tape. But it comes in the pattern, and I've long since lost it because the I, circle. The circle, yeah. Corner rounding template. Oh, corner rounding template. See right there, but look. Yeah. Oh, your little basket. No, no, no. Okay. That's funny. Is that funny? So I just use. I that. need one of those little baskets. I tell you what, I bought these. Just I think, for the, just for that just, shape. Well, just for the shape, and like when I'm preparing a parts. product, I keep all the parts together in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to. There's my back of the lining. There's the front of the lining, and on this bag you have to all the way around. Um, Mark it. Yeah, that's not work for me. I've got my friction pin, which when I cut my pattern out, I want you to notice here, as I cut the pieces out, I put little check marks by each item. <laughs> now, <laughs> but I did it with a friction pin because I can now so iron that, and then the next time I do it, I just do it again. So here, let's just watch. That's so let's smart. just touch it with the iron. This is some, this is kind of this is kind of a cool trick. Okay. And look, my check marks are all gone. No more check marks. So now I can do it again. <laughs> so I know where I left off. Okay. So now I'm just going to draw this. Since that matches, I'm just going to draw this line here. And I have to do that on all four corners of the lining and the exterior of the bag. Because this is a rounded bag. It doesn't have a, it doesn't have a boxed gusset. It has a round gusset. So this is a new thing. You know, we've been doing all these gussets all along. This is part of the reason why this bag adapts really nicely to um, vinyl or thicker fabrics because you don't have to do that layers and layers of gussets. See, I love this. So easy. So rather than try and use a paper template that won't stay, <laughs> stay where I want it, I just find something similar sized in my sewing room. And I just used that for my guide. And I've used this. But I wanted you to see it on the pattern. It really does work. <laughs> it really is the right size. Yeah, I bought these, These I think, Dollar Tree or one of those little places. I have these little bowls. And when I'm working, of course, I've taken everything out of it now because we've been using. But like the hardware, if you go into my sewing room, I'll have a, a, everything put together all the fabric, all the stuff that was with it, and there'll be a little basket that has the zipper, the heads, the feet, the whatever's all in one of these little baskets with that product so I can find it when I need it. Okay, so this is, you know, cutting. We did gluing. Now we're doing cutting. Cut these all off. I love it. I won't cut more than one layer of the foam just because it slips against itself and so I don't want to make a mistake. The fabric I can cut two or three layers, but this foam, it tends to wiggle, so when I cut it I just cut the one layer. There's actually two layers here but they're sewn together so I don't have a choice, so I gotta kind of, I gotta make sure I hold it because it will slip on you. There we go. All right. So now everybody's round. Oh, gotta do the lining. So that when the gusset goes on, it's gonna have the curve that we need. These are these little snub scissors. Um, those of you who did the rag quilt with us, this is the, these are the scissors I like for that. But I can tell you, I grab these all the time for lots of things. Okay. So now my front and my back and my lining are all cut to the right size. The next thing I have to do is put in that little D-ring that we uh, did at the very beginning that I put on the, um, well, she doesn't quite have me doing it yet, but we're gonna do it so I don't forget it. So the D-ring has to come in, and I think it's an inch and a half. Look and see. 
That's what patterns are for. This is where, when I put the um, D-ring in one of the bags that connects to the bottom, I put it in the center so that it can be a backpack. Inch and a quarter. So on the exterior of the bag, on the back side, and this is a left or right thing, so you have to think about how you want it. She explains in the pattern that she is right-handed, so she puts it on the left side. If you're left-handed, you might want to put it on the right side. If you want to make it a backpack, put it in the center. Um, she, she says, I wear my sling so it rests on my left shoulder. I'm right-handed. So she puts hers to the left. So yeah, I did say that right. Um, and this is way too long, so I'm going to cut this in half. This was just a little scrap I had laying around. See, you just... That D-ring wants to live on the floor. It just doesn't want to be where it's supposed to be. So this is twice as long as it needs to be. Um, so there we go. We're going to put that through there. And I'm going to come in an inch and a half from the side. And see what that does is that misses that curve. And I'm going to put it on the left side. Just like that. And I'm just going to sew that into place. And it goes on the back side, not on the front, it goes on the back. And that's another one that I <laughs> got the bag completely done and went, oh, that didn't work. It ended up on the wrong side. Okay, so now my ring's on. Easy peasy. And now we have to put the um, zipper, we to work on our zipper with the gusset. So there's our lining and our inside and our outside. Now we're going to work on this zipper gusset situation. Um, this is a zipper that's embedded in the gusset. So it's a little, little beyond what we've done before, but you guys can do this. I have total faith in you. Um, so I'm going to get my zipper tape and I'm going to cut off a chunk of zipper again. Because, you know, I got this really fun thing. Um, and we're just going to eyeball it and I'm going to cut that much off. Okay, and put my two zipper heads on. This is designed to be a double zipper, so it pulls out. So that means I have to put the zipper heads on at each end. You can't put them both on one end. You can't add them together. You have to put them coming from opposite directions. So I add my zipper on this end. Just being cranky, there we go. On that end. Oh. And this can be kind of tricky to get that to not have a bubble. So you got to be sure you get it in the right spot. You can buy the um, the, the zippers already, um, double zippers, and then just cut off the length you want. But then you don't get the colors you want, see? Okay, so now I've gone to the opposite end, and I'm going to put this head on this way. If I had put them on behind each other, it wouldn't have worked. Okay, so you got to put them opposite each other. And I'm just cutting the length of the zipper head off. And I'm going to slide that in. And I'm going to slide that up. Try and get both ends. There we go. And I don't have a bubble there. If I didn't get that lined up right, I'd have a bubble. So this is my zipper now. And I have a gusset. Now, I, we were talking about the fussy cutting. When I cut this gusset for the top, see how that pattern goes together? I cut it. I doubled the width of what it told me to cut them separately and cut it in one piece. And then I cut down the middle. So when my zipper goes in the middle, I'm not losing the design of my, of my pattern, of my fabric. Nice. I want to see that fabric. I, I, it's, it's just too darn cute to not have it. So this is super simple. Um, I'm going to move these zippers to one end, and I've learned to kind of fold that over and put a clip on it. That keeps them from Blind getting away. Off. But because it's oversized, now, yeah, oops, i got to make sure I get the right sides. That's my pattern. So I want it to go on this side, and then I'm going to sew it on the other side. So here we go. Back to changing to the zipper foot. You know, I tell you, what we should do is be 
better planners and put this. Have two sewing machines in the studio. Two, well, or have, um, have somebody to change the feet for us. <laughs> have the pattern sewn in order so that you don't have to keep changing the zipper foot. Well, I don't have the top to the zipper foot, so I can't put it on anyway. Is it the ankle? Is it on that AccuFeed foot? No, no. The ankle's separate. Is it in the box? No, I didn't get it in the box. Oh. Oh, I can't help you. I, I know. know. That's crazy. I'm going to have a sewing machine in. Oh, it's on the floor by your right side. Ha <laughs> ha. You know, Eleanor Burns got nothing on me. I can throw fabric with the best of them. All right, back to zipper foot. There we go. Zipper foot, straight stitch. Really and truly, when I sew at home, it's not this crazy. <laughs> I think it's because I'm out of my element. Let's get. We need to have right. like the the sewing machine room stocked with all your favorite stuff. I know stuff. we do. Well, yeah, that's. You know all the all the bare it's essentials. All about me. Okay, here we go. So now I'm gonna sew the zipper. And remember, I don't. I'm not as excited about this zipper, so I'm I'm not showing as much of it. I'm sewing pretty close to the zipper head, but not so much that the zipper head can't move. Um, and my stitch length was set at 3.0 or set at 5.0. I'm going to go back down to about 2.5 to sew this on. And we're on Speedy Gonzalez speed here. Andale, andale. Eva, Eva. Let's go. I mean, that's the first Spanish word people learn from watching cartoons. <laughs> that's the first ones I learned anyway. I was watching cartoons. Now, there's no lining to sew into this because the way the lining goes in this is really kind of specially unique. I love the way the lining goes. All right, so now, see, my patterns are going to match. Whoa, wait a minute. I sewed it to the wrong side. No, I didn't. What am I missing? Oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. It's right. There we go. I was like, wait a minute, I went too hard. Okay, so I just lined these up here, and now I'm going to do it again. Sew this zipper down. Those edges, see that lines up? I don't even have to bind it into place. There we go. And we go. How many people started this class that were like, oh, I could never sew into a zipper? And we did a zipper just about every class. And everybody's still alive. Nobody died doing a zipper. Nobody died doing a zipper. And I am using that heavy duty zipper that purse zipper. I'm not using just a standard, um, you know, the smaller zippers. I'm using those, those designed to go with bags. All right, and then I'm going to top stitch. Oh, look how, look how that pattern goes along the, either side of that. Isn't that fun? Mm -hmm. That looks really fun. Now, this is, this foam stuff doesn't typically like to iron the best. Um, so I'm going to get my little roller out I'm going to roll this so that it creases it. And when, <laughs> contagion. Anybody coughs back here, we yell contagion. That's Peter started it. It, it may pop back up, but boy, it makes it crease better. Okay. So now I'm going to lay this flat and I'm making sure I'm catching that and I'm going to go to a three point I'm at about 3.2 on this because it's fairly thick and there we go I'm staying real close to the zipper I'm allowing that to um, just make like a little welt and there's not much of the zipper head going to show our zipper See, the zipper tape is not very exposed on this one. I just, I wanted to see the red. Let's test my zipper head. We'll go through there because I did make it pretty tight. 
Yeah, she's got room. She's good. All right, let's go this other side. Do our top stitching. Even when it doesn't say to do top stitching, a lot of times I do. So you need to look at it and figure out if you can do top stitching at that point. And there we go. All right, that's my top gusset. Now the bottom gusset, you cut in one long piece. And if you look at the instructions, the way that she has you put it on, is I'm, it's long. It's longer than the top gusset. It's supposed to be. So I sew this in here, and then I sew this in here. So it makes like a big circle. Make sure you move your zippers to the middle, okay? Because if they're out here and you sew that on, you can't get them through. <laughs> so now I'm just going to sew these pieces together. This piece should measure four inches. It's going to be a little wider than that. So I'm going to sew this on, and then we'll straighten her up. Yeah, my zipper. See, my zipper didn't quite take up the full width of the gusset, so I need to shave about an eighth of an inch off of either side of that. I'm going to do that before I sew it, just to be sure we get it right. Stay tuned. Be right back. Take a break. Okay, so I trimmed this width to match the other gusset. So when you sew this together, depending on the width of your zipper, it may not be quite the right width. Make sure it matches your bottom gusset and she has the dimensions in the pattern. You just want to cut that to the right size. And then this is the bottom gusset. This is the top gusset. They are not the same size. They're not supposed to be the same size. So this now gets sewn together. Uh, here we go. And I'm going to sew this at 2.4, just a basic stitch dens density it's, or width. It's, it's not our length. Um, just like this. Okay, and the other end. Again, making sure my zipper poles are in the middle. And it's not supposed to match, so that's okay. And now I sew here. Now I've secured the end of my zipper by doing that, so I can cut these off. I don't need those anymore. Don't want those in the bulk of the bag. I keep these little pieces. I'm going to show you in a minute something fun to do with those. You'll be surprised. And then when I turn this right side out, that is the gusset. That is the outside of the bag. Okay, that's going to make the bag. But I want to sew this down and you know what? Top stitch. So I'm going to put that through right here. I'm going to go to a 3.4 stitch length. I'm making sure that this is laying that direction and I'm going to sew through those layers. It also secures the zipper down a little bit to sew this. Not quite goes so fast. Top stitch there and then we're going to do the same thing here. Top stitch here. Now I'm not locking this top stitching at the beginning of the end because I'm going to sew back over it so I don't have to lock it. If I wasn't sewn over it, I might lock it. Alright, so there you go. So now I have a nice little top stitch at the bottom of where these zippers come back. And this is the outside of the bag. So see these come down here like that, or like that, and that's the outside of the bag. No folding. This is why vinyl works really well for this. I have to do the same thing for the interior. Sew it together in a similar manner. I have the two pieces just like I had on the top for the other one, but I'm not putting the zipper in here. I'm just going to fold this over a quarter of an inch and press it down, okay? And then that sew together. So let me iron here. I'm going to slide over to the ironing board. we got a tiny space here we're working in. With my Olaso iron. I should have brought my leopard one in so y'all could see it. And same thing here, quarter of an inch. Just eyeballing it, doesn't have to be exact. And I'm going to top stitch both of those two. Okay. So here we go. And I'm still set on my top stitch stitch sleeve. And of course it's going to, there we go. 
So this is the lining, so I have two pieces, really three pieces, just like I had on the top, but this is the lining. But the zipper does not go in between these. We're gonna hand sew, I'm actually gonna hand sew. I know, <laughs> can you believe it? It's shocking. I rarely hand sew, but you do have to hand sew this, this lining in. All right, so this is my top gusset. Right here, this is the top gusset. The zipper will be between these two. So, and this is my bottom gusset. So what I'm gonna do is lay these two pieces right here on the sides, just like that. Okay, and I'm gonna sew across that seam. Come on, lay down. There. It's amazing how a piece of thread can push a piece of fabric. Let me get my needle. Red needle. And then the same thing. Lay that flat. And we go to the other end. So this is exactly what I did on the exterior I'm doing on the interior. Sewing these pieces together. And like that. And just like I did on the outside, I'm going to top stitch across right here so that seam will, will have some security. It'll be nice and firm. It's laying that seam that way so I sew over the seam. And I go back up to my top stitch. And here's this one, same thing. I'm folding that thread that so I'm sewing with the fabric that way, so I'm sewing that together. It just makes a nice finish too. It helps your all the insides lay nice together. <laughs> That's what, your insides lay nice together when they're sewn better. <laughs> That's I'm a surgeon who said that once or twice. Okay, so now I have the lining gusset, which looks pretty much like my exterior gusset, except there's no zipper in it, nor should there be. Don't need this, the that in there. All right, I'm checking the panel to make sure I'm not lying to you. All right, assemble the exterior. I'm gonna take the back panel of the exterior. I'm gonna take my really cool, that I made my um, strap. Gosh, I'm having like brain dead. Now, the way that this strap has a right side and wrong side, I wanna make sure I put it on there so when it opens up, I see it that way. Because if I put it the opposite way, if I put it this way, then it would go across my shoulder that way. And that's not what I want. Or maybe you do. Maybe you want that so it catches on your shoulder. But I want it to go this way so that when the bag is on my shoulder, people see my cool purple mm. stuff. So I'm going to find the center of this, because you know I'm lazy. And I'm going to find the center of this. I'm going to match them. Put that there, and we're going to sew this down. Isn't this fun? Look how pretty that is. Looks great. And I'm just going to sew in real close to the edge because I'm just basting this in place. With the thickness of this. So I've sewn this down. I did go ahead and put a little zigzag there to compress that a little bit so that the um, foam is not so thick. But I really was thoughtful about how I put this on here to be sure this part of my bag strap is up. So when you when you do it, think it through. This is the way the bag is going to go on. This is the back of the bag, so I wanted to be sure that strap was facing the right direction. But I put it on the other way, that would have been showing that wouldn't make me happy. So think that through when you do it. All right. Now, I have to mark the middle on the sides of the bag. The way that I do that is I have two different sizes of binder clips. I have these thicker, wider binder clips, and then I have these little pointed, these are like, they're smaller. They're just little pointed binder clips. I have both when I'm doing bags because I want to mark the center point. 
and when I mark the center, I want these little ones. If I use a fat one, it's too fat. These, these actually give me exactly the center. And on the tops, I use blue. Or on the, like on the top and the bottom, I'm gonna use the blue clips. They're color coded. Because why have them color coded if they're gonna make any difference? On the side, I use the red binder clips. Okay? This helps me when I'm putting this all together remember which part lines up with what part. Tops are blue, sides are red. Okay? Tops are blue, sides are red. So there you go. Blue, red. I need to do that to everybody. So that's a piece that has it marked. Um, this is the front and the back side of the lining. Same thing. Blue is tops. Red is sides. And I just have to find the middle point on everybody. Red. Red. And if you don't have enough binder clips, you can, you know, but everybody gets marked top and bottom, side to side. And by doing it by color, it really helps me not get mixed up when I'm putting this on. If you don't have binder clips and you use pins, be sure you just use the same pin head color. But do something to save yourselves from time from going, okay, wait a minute, am I on the side or am I on the top? You'll thank yourself later, you really will. All right, this is kind of thick. Red, oops, see, I did that wrong. That was the top. Blue, blue, red, red, okay? And I do the same with my gussets. So the gussets, what you want to do is lay them so that they're exactly the same distance from here to here as it is from here to here. So I'm gonna measure it just to be sure. And then that gives me the center. So I think it's about an inch and a half is what it ends up being. But you gotta have your halfway point on everybody. Oh, I love it when it works. Okay, so these are my sides. This is the top. So all I have to do is mark my red sides, red sides, red sides, red sides, red sides. Then we're going to mark, all I got to do is match those together, and then that gives me the top. It's geometry. Blue. The geometry. Blue. And I've managed to run out of clips. Imagine that. Here, I'll burn. I got a yellow one. You got a yellow one? That's not That's not in the color scheme. That's the wrong color scheme. Here, I'll steal a blue off of this one for now because I'm not sewing them under that anyway. So I'm going to sew the lining on this because I want you to see me do this on the lining and then we can do it on the other part. So what I have to do is sew these pieces together. And, the, and I have a curve here, but I have a straight, basically a straight edge here, it feels like. And what I'm going to do is match now my colors. So here's my red. I match my red to red. Put that together. Then I match my blue to blue. Put that together. I match my red to red. I get an extra red. See, this is why I don't have too many then. Red to red. And blue to blue. Blue to blue. Okay? There we go. So this is my lining for the bag now. I will also, I'm going to come out a little ways here, and so that I don't lose track of my middles or my sides, I use the bigger clips out here. And I don't pin that gusset all the way down. I just go to where it starts to, this starts to turn, and I, oh, there goes one. I pin it, or I binder clip it. And I'm going to come along this side, and where it stays straight, where that curve, just where that curve starts, I clip it. That's all I really need to do to clip it. 
But what that's doing is it's spreading that gusset all the way around the bag evenly. If I just willy-nilly started sewing that on, they wouldn't match. And I'm going to have to ease this circle into the lining, into the back, the back piece. And the easiest way to sew this is not with the gusset, is with the, how do I say this, with the, with this part laying on the bed of the machine and ease that part around, because you kind of have to stretch and push this. I'm going to wish I had my stylus, but we'll be fine. Okay. So basically what I'm doing is I, that part that's that gusset, that round part goes all the way around the out of the bag. And I'm going to sew that down. And I'm going to sew with the back of the bag down. It's probably time. I know. Um, straight stitch. All right. Here we go. Slow this down. And I have my fingers to catch my things. Okay, not that much. And this is not, it, it's, it's going to feel kind of weird when you do it, but you're just easing this around that curve. It's always hard to sew a curve, I think, the first time you do it, because you're like, oh, it doesn't fit. Well, it kind of does once you kind of ease that in a little bit. Oh, this is where I need my stylus really bad. Stylus is great for this because it pulls that piece in. You may get a little bit of a pucker in there. That's okay, because it's, um, when you turn it, it'll straighten itself out. It flattens out. So see how I'm kind of, I'm kind of working this corner out as I go. Here we go. And it just eases into it. There we go. This is garment. I think this is this is probably part of it I like too because this is the way you did with garments. So now I know I'm coming up on my middle. And now I'm going to come back out here and I'm going to ease this cassette in. And you just kind of, all I can tell you is, is they're both round. You just have to kind of tug them and get them to fit. See, that just takes it in. On the lining too, it's a little, the fabric is a little more forgiving, I guess. On the outside, it's going to be a little tighter. And that's how you turn those sides. And now we're not having to do that fold and trim thing like we normally do. I love how that lays. Okay. Okay. So now that I've done one side, it's all in. And you see how you get that curve down there? See that makes that curve? Even if there's a little bit of a fullness in there, it's okay because of the way the curve takes it. Now I'm going to do the same thing. This is the the other pocket inside part and this part has a pocket so be sure that pocket points towards the zipper because <laughs> if you put it in the other way around you got an upside down pocket and you got to take it out so I'm going to match my red to red again I've got my color coding so I can do it and I'm basically going to do this exact same thing that I did on the other side on this side 
So we'll let Peter get a little rest with his arm. I'll sew that together, and then you can come back and see me what we do with the other outside part. Three, two, one. So I've sewn my lining with the gusset all the way around to the to the back and the front of the lining with my pocket opening at the same <laughs> side as my zipper. So that's my lining. I'm going to set it aside. I've sewn the back of the exterior to the gusset. Now I'm going to do the, well that was the front of the exterior. Now I'm going to do the back. Again, I want to make sure my handle is up towards the zippers and this part's down towards the bottom. And I just want you to see me put this together. I mean, I'm just matching these. This is why it's so important to have those either do pins or binder clips, whatever you want to do, but do it so that you can find the middle and the sides quickly and easily. And I just line that back up and pin it down. And this, I don't have to have, well, I do have to have my zippers open for this. The zippers open all the way, okay. Um, so I assemble the top and I assemble the lining exactly the same way. They're separate from each other. They are not sewn together. Everything we've done so far in this class, the lining and the outside were sewn together. This they're not. They're completely separate entities. So don't, it's like this is a new skill. I try every time to give you something you've not done before. And so the way this goes together is a very unique, um, you got a unique up on it. You know how you catch a unique rabbit? How? Unique up on it. That's the worst joke. <laughs> That's not even good enough to be a dad joke. <laughs> it's so lame. I'm surprised. Maggie, that's a Maggie joke. That is a Maggie that's joke. A Maggie Where's joke Maggie? Sure. Is she off today? I think she's off today. But, all right. So this foam is really not too bad to work with. If this was vinyl, it would be about the same thickness. And that's why this bag works really well to, because I'm not having to fold I have to make this curve, but the curve is easier made sewing with the bigger part down than the other way around. And that's what I wanted you to see. So I'm going to line my sides up here and we're going to start sewing. Um, and she says a half inch seam, I, and I'm probably doing a little smaller seam than that, but that's okay. Mine's probably more like five eighths. 3 eighths, 5 eighths would be the same. But see how this just, you just have to pull it over and work it. Um, these gussets, the way that they roll around that, one will fit to the other. That's why you cut that curve. And the dimensions that, they, that you cut your gusset together, when you sew it together, makes it work. But you, you just pull, see how that just pulls right over there? And I match those sides. This is where, if I had my stylus, I'd be much better off. I don't have my stylus. How could I get out of the house without my stylus? What was I thinking? I know what it was. I was trying to pack up, and the cats were like, what are you doing? Smokey and Copper were like, uh, why are you taking the stuff that we like to look at and watch you do? Because when I'm sewing, they're usually right beside me. Now, right here, I'm going to go back over this a second time, because that's the strap in the bottom where the it connects and I, I really want that to be a good solid seam so I just back stitched over that a couple times and I'm just pushing that in and see I'm 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 manhandling this I really am oh manhandle it could be woman handling I don't know has to be manhandling I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm woman handling it I'm woman handling I'm it woman that's handling funny it. I'm stitching it man And that's probably part of the reason she said those half-inch seams is, you know, it, it gives your bag a little more heft. I may have to go in and go back around this again because I may not have caught it completely. I do like, um, I like using the fabric with the foam because then I can pick what I want. Sometimes you don't always find exactly what you want in vinyl or exactly what you want in a canvas. But basically I can use anything I want this way. Well, see, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing that, but I'm smoothing it, too, at the same time. You'll, by the time you do four of those corners, you'll have it down, I promise. 
And then you'll be ready to sew your bag together. You will. Well, yeah. This is this is almost literally just about to the last step. This this bag goes together pretty easily. Did I hear there's hand sewing involved? There is hand sewing. I know. Oh, I don't know if I can make it. Y'all are gonna flip out. I, I don't know if do, I can make it. I never do hand sewing, but I've, I've, you you don't have to. She has a way that you can do it with, um, the machine, but I don't like the way it finishes. Is there much hand sewing when you do English paper piecing? I know, I know, I know. You're so funny. Okay, I think that's slipped. You've a hand bit. sewn an, an entire quilt that has. I know. Way, millions of pieces. Way more seams than this millions thing has. Millions of pieces. Millions of pieces. I'm probably going to have to go back and check this because I think I got a little too far. Looks good to me. Looks good, yeah. Looks like everything sure got caught. caught. Everything. All right, here it we go. It looks like it'll hold water. Yeah. <laughs> and there she's born. Boom. There she is. Isn't that a lovely bag? Ooh. How can you not like that? Now see, so I have these curves. Nice. And there's a little fullness in there, but it's, it smooths out when, so when you're sewing that, if you're like, oh, there's a little bit of a lump there, it's really okay. You, it has to have some fullness in order to make that turn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh my goodness. Do you like it? I can't even Are you stand happy? how gorgeous that is. Man, you're going to you're gonna have to take it on the town. I am. Okay, so here's how your lining goes in. You drop your line, so this is right, right side out. This is wrong side out. And again, make sure there's no money make sure down there's, there. Yeah, we'll make sure everybody's connected. I caught everybody along the edges. You know, I don't have any mistakes. And I slide this inside. Now this gusset that you made, remember we had that opening at the top. What you do is you fold this down. So there's where the gusset connected at the top. Here's the same gusset on the inside. And I take these two pieces and I match them right here. Okay? And I'm going to make sure those just come together. And if I still had a marked front and, or the middle, it would be great. But I, at this time, it's pretty easy to figure out, okay, that curve matches that curve and this curve matches this curve. All right? And I'm going to do that on both sides. This is the only thing that attaches the lining to the bag. And now I'm going to center that up. And I'm going to sew right there and right here. And I'm going to use my machine. And she, her, she has pictures of this in the pattern, so don't, don't be scared. You can do it. And I'm going to take my sewing machine and I'm going to sew right in that seam again. Okay? And that's what secures the lining to the bag. Otherwise, my lining is just going to hang loose. And it's pretty thick. But all it really needs to do is just go through all those layers. So I'm sewing through the lining, the front of the bag, and the back of the bag. right on that gusset so it's it's on this gusset that you can't see it's right where so i just sewed across there and that's right inside there okay same thing on the other side and it's i, I don't really you only need to sew about four inches i mean it's not i do back stitch that because i really want this to hold this is, like I say, this is the only thing that holds the bag to the lining. Well, the hand stitching is going to do it too. There you go. So I'm just, just securing. See, now my lining is attached to my bag. And then what I'm going to do, and I kind of turn this almost like really inside out to do it, is I'm going to take this piece and put it right up to that zipper. And I'm going to use my binder clips, and I'm going to put that in place all the way around, and then I go through and I hand stitch that. Okay, let me show you on another bag. So the lining has been sewn inside this seam, and I've pulled that across, 
and I've sewn that all the way down just like that along the side of the zipper and that's how you get that lining in there so you can see why this fabric this this pattern works for vinyl in a better way because I, I never have a place where I'm sewing a big thick gusset it has the wrap around gusset um, and that's why vinyl works on this pattern. I know some of you have really struggled with having the vinyl be too thick to go through your sewing machine. This bag eliminates that problem and you can still use vinyl to sew it. Um, and now I'm just going to take this home and when I'm sitting, you know, watching TV tonight with the hubs, I'll be, I'll just be sewing this by hand. I can do it in an evening. It doesn't take long at all. Um, and just securing this all the way around so that it looks like that on the inside. all the way around and that holds it in place because it's sewn in here so there you have it um, I'm in love with this bag oh I need to take that off so I can see it just kind of zip if that was my entire box <laughs> of finer clips oh my gosh just hit the floor but it's really okay it's okay all right there she is Look how pretty that bag P3P3522. is. I better not let some people see this because it'll get, it'll get, it'll disappear. Gosh, that's a stunning bag. Now, okay, I want to show you another little trick. Wait a minute, I forgot one more thing. So, they always have little hangy things off of here. So I've got these little odd zipper pieces left. Let me show you what you can do with these. So I can cut the zipper off like this. So now all I have is just the metal part, and I can sew the, run this through here and tie a little knot in it. It may not be big enough. Or you can put a little tassel cap on that. I can put a tassel cap on that. Look, it's like a little <laughs> little ring. I'll probably, I'll, that's small enough. I'll put a tassel cap on it. You know what those tassel caps are. We've used those yeah. before. We have them out there. But I'll use that. Um, I'll use all these little pieces. I think, yeah, I think a tassel cap. I've got those rose gold tassel caps. Put that right around all my zipper heads. So those little loops that are in there, I'll run that through there. We'll, we'll be sure that we post a picture on the Facebook page. But I'll put a tassel cap on the end of that. And then I've got little zipper pulls. Cool. I didn't waste my zipper. Zipper pulls. They're zipper. Tape. Tape, but they're zipper pulls. Zipper coil. Zipper coil. So you made a zipper pull out of zipper I made coil. A zipper pull out of a zipper <laughs> coil. Isn't that fun? That's fun. It's a great use of that. So it doesn't waste those pieces that I've cut off. So now I have zipper coils that are zipper pulls. There you go. So I'll put zipper, I'll put tassels on that and make that work. Ta-da! That's a fun bag. Thanks, Noodlehead. I appreciate the company that wrote this pattern. I really do. I, I think she did a beautiful job on making it a very functional bag that's a easy to make pattern. So. I know this was a long video. Uh, the next bag we make isn't going to take nearly this long. But uh, we have been making a lot of bags that have been fairly simple. So I wanted to kind of bump it up a little bit and give you a bag that really looks like a professional bag. But isn't that hard? So you're, you'll amaze and surprise your friends when you have it done. So thanks a lot for watching. <sighs> Peter's worn out. I'm worn out. I think it's time for a break. Happy stitching.